Hey everybody, welcome to the Crit House. We are continuing the My Five series here where we talk to artists and photographers about images and artists that have influenced them through their career. And uh, today on the program is Denver-based photographer, Mark Sink. Mark, thanks for joining hey. us. How are you doing? Thanks it's, for having me. I am looking forward to this conversation for, as I have been for a long time. Mark's images today that we will be discussing include Walter Chappelle, Ruth Thorne Thompson, Andy Warhol, Man Ray, and Kristen Hatchy Sink. That's it. My wife. Your wife. That'll be good to talk about when we get there. Uh, Mark, how how do you talk about yourself as a photographer or an artist? How do you describe yourself? I like to describe myself as a uh, art activist and community gatherer. Um, I I tend to always a lot of times bring in the community to help project myself in gathering salons or you'll see a repeating um, through my history. It's always bringing in through if it's the Denver Salon or the Codex or the Denver Collage Club or the Month of Photography. Yeah. Um, it's it's a gathering of community in my backyard, the beginning of our Museum of Contemporary Art Denver started with six of us in our backyard. Uh, we need a logo. No, we need a mission statement. And, <laughs> and off they go. Then they become big monsters. And and it's not fun when it becomes a job. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm terrible at business. I'm a fit I'm I am a darling of the press and curating, but I'm a failure at, at being business art and art for business. Uh, you know, sort of oil and water to me. There's yeah. more power in numbers. Art through history yeah. has always been a group, a group trying to go into a gallery or museum or any organ by yourself. It can be done and, and and uh, well, but when you come in with a curated concept of a group, your your chances of something happen, I have found in my career much more successful. So it, for for the subject we're here today, you have chosen five images um, of which that you talked tough. about, or five, five, I know people tell me, I've, I've just, had people being a little upset at me about saying, can, can't I, I do 10? I wake up every morning <laughs> and change the five, you know, um, it de kind of depends on what mood you're in at, of the week, you know, you saw I sent you 20 or something, and then I said, I'll have it hacked, I'll, I'll hack it down. <laughs> You are you are not the first to do that. I will say. Yeah, I, so. <laughs> well, let's take a look at your five images and see what we're talking about. So, Walter Chappelle is your is the first image that uh, we will discuss. Tell us why this is here and what it means to you. Um, Walter um, came into my um, early in the nineteen seventies when I had just started going back to school and was studying fine art and was photography I never really had considered could be um, a fine art ex experimental exploratory medium. And back in those days, believe it or not, there were not a lot of programs for fine art photography. There was programs for Ansel Adam type of work because zone system for yep. which is you know fine art photography but it's a very calculated you know take beautiful pictures of landscape things and negative density the experimentation and sort of uh, side that um, uh, I came into was discovering uh, Walter Chappelle and he lived nearby uh, in New Mexico. And 
he had an exhibition in our Colorado Photographic Art Center in 1981. And uh, um, that, that just opened up my eyes um, that, you know, leads into uh, our next person, Ruth Thorne Thompson, who, who she does her whole life this, these are paper negatives. Um, her whole career, she's collected in museums around the world, is, is, was that concept of the camera doesn't matter. I always thought if I can just get a Hasenblad and a Zeiss <laughs> lens, my pictures will be better. And, and, and she very quickly pointed out its concept, not the camera. And where these are just made with little cutouts on toothpicks that she puts in and builds her own worlds that um, are all done with a cardboard box and the trays and a red bulb and her developing stuff all fits in the box and that's it. And mm -hmm. you can have photograph, you know, make something great all over the world. So she's the one that first suggested I go look and find an old toy camera. And that's when I found the Diana camera. And it was in a toy box that I'd taken pictures of my mother a decade before when I was maybe 10 years old. And I developed that film and it blew my mind, the Diana camera. And I thought I was the only one using it. And <laughs> It turned out Nancy Rexroth, there was a great book done by Joe Featherstone on the Diana. You know, Ansel Adams even used the Diana camera. Is that right? Um, I don't think I knew that. And, uh, but I didn't know that when I had first discovered it. It's Andy Warhol. Yeah, there, there's the Marilyn. Well, talk about a course shift in your career. I, I didn't have, I was lucky enough to, um, uh, meet Andy, a friend Craig Scott had sent me to Fort Collins. He had met him and, and uh, I, you know, Andy was huge for me uh, when I started to first study art and photography. And I pretty much believe, you know, they call these paintings, I call them photographs, personally. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, uh, I, my, in, my definition of photography stretches very wide, long and wide, Good. much further than most people. And this I had hanging up in this, I have, still have this poster hanging up in my room, you know, in college that I would go over it. There, he, at the Fort Collins show, Andy had a silk screen of uh, the Campbell's soup can on the t-shirts. And he pulled me aside, told me later to make sure you load up on those t-shirts. And I said, why? He said, we were too cheap to have t-shirts done. So I had the kids at the factory get out the original Campbell soup screen, <laughs> screen these shirts. I attached myself to Andy. I was gonna put a picture of me with my pants down in the front of his door. <laughs> <laughs> of his motel because he asked me I had been in a terrible bicycle wreck in the state finals on the final sprint to the finish line we all went bouncing around on the pavement and he loved those wounds and he said can I see him and I'm like sure and I'm like pulling my pants down <laughs> and photographing right when the president of the school drove up <laughs> Um, but that was the start that shifted. I used to shoot everything that moved. Andy shot everything that moved. I used the Minox. He used the Minox. Hmm. We shot everything, everything. He loved that. He would take my phone calls. Let's, let's move on to Man Ray, your fourth image. Uh, Man Ray, you know, well, that freedom and the experimenting that Man Ray is about and of course, I'm deeply into uh, new hidden superstars. And the one, this is Kiki, 
a Montre LeVay that was one of his most famous models. And he was really an incredible artist muse. You work with people with incredible artistic respect and they come back and back and, and you're creating together, you know, and, and not taking a picture, but you're making work together. And that's yes. where I pride myself of going through my personal work is all kind of a collaboration. Well, yes. um, speaking of uh, a muse, um, I, I, will, I will assume that in one way or another, Kristen Hatchke, Hatchy Sink, yep, Chris, oh, your, Kristen your wife, Hatchy Sink. that you are, are a muse for her and she is a muse for you, or tell us, tell us yes. if that's true. Um, I wanted to add Kristen into this because um, she had a powerful influence on the direction of my work and she had hit into the this, this series of incredible flower faces and still lives that ties in with my love of my superhero, uh, Rachel Reichelk. And she was a Dutch master, but you couldn't be a master and a female, you know, then. But she did these like still lives of punk rock still lives in the forest with bugs eating and having sex and snakes and logs and skulls. And brilliant. She right. also and has taught me, I'm a typical male shooter she taught me here here i go again using a word that stop being so shoot she called you know shooting from my dick you know stop just turn stop <laughs> that you that you don't need to go you know and and it did she her vision and you know of had a big change in being more sensitive to how you interact and what you're shooting had a feminine influence on me that had, a, and that's why I added her a monumental impact in what we're learning today with objectification and, you know, of the whole thing. And that was amazing. You can teach an old dog new tricks. You know, the, the, it had a major impact on my vision and scene and things. Um, so, and I well, love her deeply. That's, uh, that's why I want first. To first of all, I mean, it's that's a that's a great story about her influence on you, but it's also one of those things that I am. Um, so I don't I don't have the long history as a photographer as you. I mean, I've been taking pictures my whole life, but I haven't been taking it seriously until fairly recently, last decade or so. Um, and and I'm I'm also learning that I have a very specific perspective that's informed by me also being, you know, an older white guy um, and raised in a very specific area with the privileges that come with that and trying to find a way in the work that I do to not have that influence that work that I have traditionally done. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm, I am fighting, I'm fighting and learning that same thing that it sounds like Kristen has taught you or helped you learn it helped me dramatically and it's overall even as a curator we're in new times you yes. know um and there are things that i struggle with more than ever when people show me their portfolio of poor you know people in india begging on the street side that they went by and snapped the shot and how beautiful it, you know and then yeah. and, uh, and they get back on the tourist bus, so, you know, shooting of bums or shooting in, white people going to Indian reservation. You know, yeah. they're, they're, it's become gratefully so a new self-realization and analytical looking at who we are. Mark Sink, listen, it has been more than a pleasure to uh, talk to you and hear the stories uh, that you tell. Um, and I greatly appreciate you coming and joining you us on the Grid House. You kept me on the rails. I, I <laughs> flew off here and there, and uh, but thank you. Well, we uh, freelanced a little bit, but it was all good. It was a good good yeah. talk. <laughs> <laughs> I warned so, you. Uh, well, so you. Th good thank you. Time. Thank you again for joining us. And I want to thank all of you for watching the Crit House this with Mark Singh today. Keep doing this. Get it out there. That's Thank the plan. Thank you very much. A real pleasure.